we just had Visioneering at XPRIZE. XPRIZE, um, we hold an annual event called Visioneering where we brainstorm ideas. And um, that would become great XPRIZES. Uh, and this past Visioneering, we had a couple of good AI XPRIZES. One is AI for truth. Um, when someone makes a statement, can you have an AI algorithm that's able very rapidly to say factual truth, here's the roots of that, this is opinion, or this is disinformation, all right? I think that'd be very useful in our, in our coming world. The other one, which, which was um, AI-mediated communication between any two species, Well, wow. right? Can I talk to whales or dolphins in a in a consistent, accurate, two way fashion? That would be nuts. That would be amazing. Yeah, I'd love that for my dog. That would be yeah. a trip. I know. Be a trip. But it would be take me out, food. Pet yes. Me. I mean, yeah. no but you know, on a consistent basis. Uh, I mean, you can imagine like uh, if you could talk to whales and dolphins, they would help you explore the oceans mm. or talk to birds. There's a, a kid that's missing in the forest here. Help me find them. Dude, th so that's very interesting. And I know the way your brain works and you take a very beautiful, optimistic look at that. Um, it would be utterly fascinating. So killer whales are vicious, vicious, and they will go eat a great white's liver just because they can. <laughs> And they will toy with dolphins. There are dolphins that will kill other dolphins and they'll mess with them. Uh, dolphins that try to have sex with humans. I mean, just on and on. Like, it's <laughs> crazy. Stories. And I have a feeling that were we to actually be able to communicate with animals, it may be a little more distressing than we want to believe. <laughs> I read a story a long time ago and I did find this very interesting. This speaks to your interpretation of the Borg as being a misread. And it was these creatures that had these tails that had like these almost fiber optic tendrils. And when they would connect them- Sounds like Avatar. Yes, I would be shocked if he hadn't read this story because yeah. it is very similar to that. But this was years ago. Yeah. I read this probably 30 years ago, 35 years ago. And uh, they would connect their tails and they would instantly know the entire history, emotional milieu of the person they were how connecting amazing. with. And what was interesting was how once you could no longer lie or yes. hide anything from anybody, there was there was a relaxed sort of acceptance this is, this of is yourself. This is who I am, and, like it or not. Yeah. This is who I am. You got your own bullshit. I've got mine. Yeah. I mean, honestly, and when I think about it, uh, on a, on a relationship side, and this is something that you know, uh, talk to Lisa more about the ability to be absolutely brutally honest mm. about your feelings, about your desires, about everything you've ever done. I mean, how many people actually have people in their lives that? know everything about you where there's zero to hide. I mean, it's like, like in a relationship and you look at a woman and go, wow, she's gorgeous. And you're willing to say that. And, and, or, you know, something that you were ashamed of having done, but everything is fully disclosed. I think that level of intimacy would be amazing. Amazing. It would be you, you, Oh man, the, the symmetry that would have to be there though, because if there's even slight imbalance of. Sure. And, and therefore a lot of relationships would not work, but when they do click, um, and there's full disclosure and your deepest likes, deepest fears are fully known to both sides. It is a, a level of complete honesty. And I mean, someone who knows you as well as you know yourself. I mean, that, I mean, we're going in a very different conversational subject, but um, I, I think that is, a, that was something I would desperately love. And I have a few friends in my life where it's like, they know almost everything possible. And it's not that I wouldn't disclose things to them. It's just, we've never had those conversations. Mm -hmm. And those are the people closest to me, right? For whatever dysfunction I have, only my wife knows me like that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why. I uh, I don't. Well, just share them with. Well, share it with me now, right now. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> live, live on camera. Um, and then you and have a billion people know about it. <laughs> the funny thing is, that I don't actively hold things back. Like I'm a pretty open book, but it is like there's something about sharing your life with somebody where they see all the like 
What do you like when you're sick? What do you like when something goes really well, when something goes really poorly? And there's, there's just too much intimacy for there to be any posturing whatsoever because they just see you too often. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. So these are the things that AI are going to enable, you know, uh, imagine with this level of BCI where you can't lie. Mm. I mean, interesting, right? Because you could probably make up uh, simulated truths that you honestly believe, and people do do that. Anyway, going back, uh, where do you want to take this back to? Let's rewind the tape here. <laughs> well, so the thing that I want to know, so this is all very interesting to me in terms of where this goes and how far out it gets, and it really does become quite fascinating. But right now, there are tremendous opportunities for people that really understand what's going on. Uh, obviously bold capital, this is a big part of where you place your bets is yeah. do I understand a little bit more than other people where this is all going? So what, what is the right now today bridge? What are the opportunities that somebody listening to this should understand whether it's AI, quantum computing, longevity, where are the big opportunities? So, so I, I believe without question, the two biggest business markets on the planet are AI and longevity, right? Uh, if you think about from a national standpoint, a national leader of a country uh, should care about the health and the, uh, the integral of intelligence over their country. If you could increase the intelligence of your nation by 20%, right? Or the health of your nation by 20%, massive, right? Or in a company, increase the intelligence of your, of your uh, your workforce or the health of your workforce. These are huge levers to move. You know, I'm often um, keynoting inside of companies or YPO events or other, you know, uh, about those two subjects. I mean, that's my typical, like, that's all that matters right now, AI and longevity. And and I'll ask people in a, in a you know, a wealthy group um, uh, of individuals, I mean, honestly, how much of your capital would you give up for an extra 20 healthy years? Um, and if they're honest about it, it's well over 50% of, of their, of, you're going to spend it anyway at the end of your life. Yeah. Right. Trying to like deal with. Wouldn't you give a hundred percent? I think people would, but then they say, well, I'm going to leave it to my kids or I'm going to leave it to wow. my philanthropy or whatever the case might be. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to paint a scenario. You, you are before. I, 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 I am, I am with you. I'm a, I, you know, listen, I don't want to leave the money to my kids. on their and behalf. Walk. I want to understand this mindset because this is shocking to me. Uh, you're before a credible source. Let's yes. call this credible source God, just to make it easy. And God is like, Hey bro, <laughs> button on the left. Uh, you get 20 extra years, but you're going to give me every dime, all of your assets, yes. everything yeah. button on the right. You die tomorrow, but you get to give your family all your assets. Yeah. You're some telling people, me that there people, are people that yeah, hit the course, button on the 100%. right? Whoa. Because uh, people want to leave a legacy. Why the hell do you give a billion dollars to Harvard? Um, do they really need another billion dollars? You know, you want a legacy there. People want to know that they're going to live, their, their legacy is going to live after them whether it's in the form of their kids or the form of their name. And so, yeah, um, there's a balancing act. Maybe it's 20% that they would hold back. Uh, but, those are not the buttons before you. There is no 20%. Yeah. There's yeah. all or nothing. Yeah. But you, wow. Okay. Uh, that's crazy to me. And but going back to your question, I think longevity is one of the largest business opportunities that's going to materialize over so the decade ahead. So how do you ahead. take advantage of it? What, what are you doing to be ahead of the curve? Um, uh, well, building companies there in that. So Fountain Life is sort of my, my biggest company I'm building for a global footprint for enabling everyone to have access to the best therapeutics and the best diagnostics, right? The diagnostics are, is there anything going on inside your body right now you need to know about? If there is, you want to know because you can take action. We find 2% of the people who go through Fountain Life have a cancer they don't know about. 2.5% have an aneurysm they don't know about. 14.4% have either uh, metabolic disease, nor uh, neurodegenerative disease, uh, cardiovascular disease, something you need to take action on right away. 
And so the thesis there is your body no longer needs to be a black box. Yes, the, the thesis is your body's amazingly good at hiding disease, incredibly good. And you're better off confronting You're it. better off knowing as early as you can because you can do something about all of these things. And why now? What What is because now? The, because the tech is there to image at high fidelity without the false negatives. And the tech is there to understand what the data means, right? So a, a friend of mine, super successful individual um, who I'm doing business with in, in Fountain Life and, and, uh, and he wanted to go through the experience, goes through the experience, and we discovered two aneurysms in his brain. Wow. Serious aneurysms. He's in surgery a week later. They're, they're clipped and blocked, and he's fine in that threat. But um, had he not, it was a ticking time bomb for him, right? We all know people who have, oh, my God, they died in their sleep. Um, or they go to the hospital and... The doctor says, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you've got stage three or stage four, whatever it is. It didn't happen that morning. It's been going on for some time. You just don't know how. So the stats are the following. 70% of people who have a heart attack had no previous symptoms, right? Uh, you don't detect cancer until it's stage three or four from a pain or something right. going on. It is a slow, your body's amazingly good at hiding it. Uh, you don't de develop a... Uh, a Parkinsonian tremor until 70% of the substantia nigra uh, uh, neurons are gone. And so you need to look. And people say, I don't want to know. I say, bullshit, of course you want to know. As early as you can. Fully know. Because there's now things because you can do about it. Because there are things you can do about it, for yeah. sure. Medicine has progressed incredibly well. And it's moving. And if you're wealthy, you want to know, because I'm going to fund the research to solve that thing. Right. So... Um, in Fountain, the two questions is, is something going on you need to know about today? And if there isn't, fantastic. I go every year for my upload, and then I'm tested throughout the year on stuff that I'm incrementally improving. And the second thing is, what are you likely to develop? And how do we push that off? How do we solve that? How do we reduce your chance of heart, neurovascular, you know, whatever it might be? Uh, so that's what I'm building, I built a couple of companies, one in stem cells with Bob Hurry, who's a CEO there called Cellularity, another one called Vaccinity that's developing vaccines. So vaccines are amazing things. Your, your brain is the most complicated machine in the universe that we know of. Your immune system is the next. Your immune system is protecting you against infectious disease, again, against cancers, right? We're all developing cancers all the time. And your immune system, your natural killer cells, find those cancer cells Right, because cells replicate a certain number, it's called the Hayflick limit, you know, 50, 60 replications, and then they should have the decency to die. If they don't, they can become senile cells putting out inflammatory factors, or they can become cancer cells, immortal cells, and they grow. And your natural killer cells detect those cancer cells and zap them. But as you grow older, you have something called immuno exhaustion. Your immune system starts to slow down and you don't detect it and they can start to grow. And so if you can find cancers on MRI, there are things called the Grail test, which take a liquid biopsy, blood biopsy, and looking for cancer DNA in your bloodstream. And so you can, you can do something about these now. If you like that clip, check out another powerful clip right here and I'll see you there.